everyone. I'm Matt Napoli. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Hey, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm a tech advocate with Cisco Learning and Certification. And welcome to episode 54 of DevNet Snack Minutes. DevNet Snack Minute is your weekly 10-minute all things DevNet, giving you a quick, fun way to learn about Cisco APIs, coding, and just some cool stuff. And uh, we have a returning guest this week. Uh, you might remember Michael Chenitz came and joined us in episode 49, where we talked about kind of an overview of what cloud native is conceptually. Um, but today we're actually going to have him back and talk about one of the main concepts around uh, cloud native, uh, which is service mesh. So, Mike, if you don't mind introducing yourself again, just for those new to DevNet Snack Minutes, and then we'll jump into to introducing service mesh. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me again. I really appreciate it. So my name is Mike Chenitz. Uh, I was previously, when we, when I was here last, in the CTO org, and I actually moved over to uh, be the head of content and uh, content community and events for Cisco DevNet. Um, but the reason, yeah, that's so I'm, you know, we're all on the same team now. The reason why I'm here though today is to talk a little bit about uh, Service Mesh Manager, which is um, really a, a solution that's on top of Istio, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. But I just wanted to kind of talk about some key concepts and, um, you know, we'll take it from there. So Mike, um, just, just give me an, give me an overview. If I, you know, if I'm diving into this, this cloud world, what is, what's a service mesh? Like what, why do I care for it? And how does it play in the, in the whole architecture? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So, you know, I think that once you get into containers and you get into specifically things like Kubernetes, um, you start to have a need for looking at, how traffic comes across the, um, you know, the different containers and pods and things like that, how things are performing, um, maybe even setting some SLOs, things like that. But you need a way that can grab all that information, kind of correlate it together, and then give you some kind of feedback on how things are, are, are performing. And you may even have the desire to do that over multiple clusters. So maybe you have something in you know, Amazon in EKS and maybe you have something in IKS on-prem and you want to have a fabric that's kind of underneath that collects all the information and says, okay, well, this particular container is communicating with this particular container. And by the way, that has this many requests per second and is a red, yellow, green. So it gives you that kind of overview of how everything's performing because previous to this, you would really have to do a lot of things from the command line. It really wouldn't visualize it well. You didn't have good observability. This kind of gives you all of that. And it also allows the, the different um, containers or microservices to intercommunicate together. Um, so Mike, it seems like uh, something like Service Mesh or Service Mesh Manager in this instance would abstract some of the away some of the things that developers would have had to worry about in the past, like maybe security or uh, inner networking of, of containers. Is, is that true? Yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the main you know advantages of a Service Mesh is that you know all these all these different containers and pods. They they all the services need to intercommunicate. And really, one of the things that you can do is use MTLS across all of it, and that takes the onus away from the developer to have to you know deal with certificates and secure connections and all that kind of stuff because this can handle it across the whole mesh. Nice. Uh, so that's a great thing. And also, all the logging and analytics and and all those things can be handled here instead of. Um, you know, in, instead of having that all have to be built into the application itself. The Istio itself is open source and it's out there. I could go grab it and have that integrated with me. Why SS, SMM and besides that, it's Cisco. Why, why do I, you know, why should I go with this as opposed to just going and get the service mesh out, service out there? Yeah, so the advantage of the service mesh, if um, if you guys can see my screen, is that you get this observability here. So this observability is amazing. So what you see on the screen is is all these different pods and services, and this whole thing is is running within a Kubernetes cluster called SMM Demo right now, and you can see that up top here. All these different um, services are intercommunicating and you could see that if I click on one of these, I actually get information about it. I can see whether they're running well. I can see if they're not running well. Um, additionally, this is this is a live view. I can go to a timeline and maybe see where something wasn't maybe running as well. And I could see that maybe this one has a little bit of, uh, you know, it's a little bit unhealthy. But if I want to drill down, I can click on the health tab and I can go down to something like 
uh, you know, error rate, latency rate, all these. And I could just keep clicking around. I could see this one's a little bit unhealthy, rates a little bit. Saturation, CPU. Okay, this is probably where it's where I have to look at. So now I know it's CPU. Let me just check memory. Nope. Oh, looks like CPU is is what's causing the bulk of the problem here. So I can do things like that. I can also go in and go to uh, services. And one of the things I can do is click on these services and go to traffic management. I can go and say, create new, and I can actually create another piece of this. So kind of like a load balancer where I say, I want a subset V2 of this service. I want it to be on the same port number, but I want it to be like 90, uh, sorry, 90 over here and 10% over here. And I can do what's called a canary uh, implementation where it'll start to advertise this new V2 service at 10% and with, with keeping the other service at 90 and start to introduce that service. And if it sees no errors, it's going to fully introduce it through. If it doesn't, then it's, then it's going to you know, back it back out. So this quickly allows you to not only see and observe everything, how are things performing? How, what's the 95th in latency? What's the security? How is everything secured? But it also allows you to, to do things like quickly change um, load balancers and stuff like that. Whereas if, you know, going back to your question, if you were to use Istio, it's really very command line, you know, and that's not saying that you can't do it here. You absolutely can. You can consume things in either uh, by the GUI, you can consume it as a operator and, and make, you know, custom things there, or you can run it by the command line. So we give you that opportunity. But the observability is is the killer feature here, and this is all integrated into my instance of uh, Intersight, right? So, so right now this is a add on within Intersight. So you you actually when you bring up Kubernetes, um, if you have a cluster, then you can click on the little add ons tab, and you just click the button, and you could install this on top of your Kubernetes cluster, and then you get this here. And after you do that, you get all this functionality. You could also, um, you know, use it with a, with a cloud provider and you can connect your, your um, different uh, server. You can connect your service mesh together with two different clusters. So there's, there's a lot of capabilities here. That's, that's really exciting, Mike. Um, man, I wish we could dig in a little bit more. And, and, and it, these concepts are so fun to talk about, but we don't have so much time. Um, so thank you. Uh, unfortunately, that's the, the, the all the time we have. So um, uh, we're going to have to have you back to talk about more of these concepts um, and kind of dig in maybe to the under the hood of what's going on in Service Mesh Manager, because um, we kind of saw the top level, which is really exciting to begin with. But I, I'm sure that our, our audience and, and our developers out there really like to understand what what is going on underneath the hood. And maybe we can have you back and, and talk about that. What do you what do you say? Absolutely. I'd love to come back. You guys are always a lot of fun. This has always been great. And, uh, you know, I enjoy it. So absolutely. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Mike. Um, since you've already been a guest on this, uh, we won't ask you the the the, the question again. Uh, but uh, thank you, Snackers, for joining us this week and catch us next week for another new episode of DevNet Snack Minute. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Snackers. Thanks, guys. Thanks.